One body. One body. One church. Hey, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. Husband love your wives even as Christ loved the church and he gave himself, he gave his life for it. That we might sanctify it and that we might cleanse it by the washing of water by the word. Why? That he could present it to himself a glorious church without spot or wrinkle or any such thing but that it should be holy Unto him be glory in the name of Christ Jesus, the glorious church, the bride of the Lamb, built on the rock of ages by the great I am. Oh, the glorious church, eh, eh, the bride of the Lamb, built on the rock of ages by the great I am. So we say, glory, glory, the whole church say, Church, believers say, everybody say, to the marriage feast of his glorious church. Now he's the master planner, and he has set up a church to last forever and ever and ever. And he has set an organizational structure in place. Oh, glory to the Lamb of God. And this is the structure. God had set some first as apostles. God had set some as prophets. And he even set some as teachers. After that, miracles and then gifts of healing helps governments and diversity of tongues. So let us be glad, rejoice, and bring honor to him. Why? Because the marriage of the Lamb is come. And his bride, that's us. We have made ourselves ready. Unto him be glory in the of well, Christ Jesus. The glorious church, the bride of the Lamb, built on the rock of ages by the great I am. Oh, the glorious church, eh, eh, the bride of the Lamb, built on the rock of ages by the great I am. So we say, Oh, we say to the marriage feast of his glorious church. Everybody say, all oh, believers say, oh, oh, to the marriage feast of his glorious church. The glorious church, people sing hallelujah. The glorious church is the bride of the Lamb. The glorious church built on of ages oh he's the great i am i am that i am that i am that i am i am the glorious church the glory the glorious church and this is our men say Only with inside. Um, Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. This is a seed sown just to reach out for those who have not made the decision to be a member of this elite organization. The choice is yours and it is free. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You may have your seats. Hallelujah. Go to say things to yourself, you know. You know, sometimes you're hearing voices. Don't wait to hear crazy voices. Speak to yourself. Tell yourself, stop. Hear your voice speaking good things, amen? Don't hear people telling you all kind of nonsense about what ain't good and what you ain't doing good and what can't work out and what is so hard and how you ain't good with interview. Don't listen to them things. Speak to yourself. Believe what you want to believe according to the word of God that what God says about you and speak it. And you begin to feel it. Say amen. Hallelujah. I didn't start preaching, you know. I had a few other preambles before I get there. I am so happy this morning. Somebody say hallelujah. 
Amen, amen, amen. Well, let me start by talking about this brother's testimony. Brother Jabez gave this testimony today and all of that. It's amazing. When people come up here, people, they forget what they want to say, you know, because, I mean, we shared this thing for about 30 minutes, this testimony he shared with me, and he came and said it here in two seconds. That testimony was so good, I tell you, and I said, you got to share this on Sunday. He told you all he prayed for three. Well, I think he told me he prayed for four, if not ten. You know, plenty of things we believe God for. Believe God for this, you know, the new job. Listen to me, that guy is a graduate, a graduate of business. He's been working in that store. Manager, but working in store, cooking pizza. You cook it or bake it or what? Doing, making pizza, right? Whatever, right? Making the pizza, serving the pizza, doing the pizza. All of that he was doing, I mean, and he was a graduate of business. Was believing God for a better job. Somebody say amen. Is that a good thing to believe God for? Amen. amen. And better money too, eh? And that means more tithes. You didn't tell them that part. You know, more tithes, yeah, because I got to know how the money increased. Everything I get to know, you know. So I expected my cut in the money. I didn't tell you that part. My cut in the money. I forgot to tell you that part. That's part. When you testified and all of that, all of that has to happen. I had to get a cut. But he wanted another job. He wanted a house. And with the job now, he's going to be getting a house part of, part of it in the next year or two. Or probably one year, maybe. Not so. Amen. In one year. He also wanted to get back into school. I told you he's a graduate of business. Right now, he's studying law. Somebody say Amen. Amen. So all everything he wanted, God put everything in place. God is an awesome God. And let me tell you, let me tell you, while he was there, he told me sometime, I, I don't know if I announced in church or somewhere. Yes, I did. We needed somebody. We needed a, a courier person. We needed a janitor. We needed all kind of thing. Work, people to work in church now. And this brother came to me and said, I work in Domino's Pizza. I'm the manager. My time is a little flexible. There, but, you know, I mean, you could work from 6 to, 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 to 12 you know, AM, he works all kind of hours, all late hours. He said, they're working me too hard there, but I want to make time for God. I want to do what he want to do. I said, how are you going to do what he want to do in church? You're working. He said, anytime, call me, clean the toilet, run errands, whatever I will do. Anything. I don't want to be paid a cent. Call me. Any I'm, ask the guy. Ask the church staff. He said, anytime, anything, call me. I'm going to do it. It's okay. I'm going to do it. And that is how, you know, that is how part of that job thing got fixed up. We call the guy to go and pick up food. We call the guy to go and pay bills. We call the guy to do anything. You figure he works here. He'll go. If he can't go, he'll send somebody, send the vehicle, whatever. He'll come, fix around. I'm telling you, that guy said, I want to I give my time to God. And I told him, would you be anointed attender? He said, anything you want, I want to do. The more I do for God, the better I am believing God for big things. And I want to begin to do stuff for God before I get it. Somebody say amen. I'm telling you. When they testify, you figure God just favored him because he looks good. Well, he looks good, right? You think because God just liked that face and those glasses and maybe God doesn't like you. People sow seeds and do stuff. He told you it was sowing, but he didn't know to what extent. We call the guy all times. He does whatever. He said, it doesn't matter. I want to work for God. They're working me too hard. I want to work for God until I get something else. I want to give my time to God. Whatever you want, I want to do it. Say Amen. We've got to humble ourselves and serve. If you want God to do something for you, and I'm telling you, and, and God, he said everything he prayed for, God did. He told me a fourth thing, but I can't tell you all yet. But trust me, everything the guy prayed for, God did. Everything. Amen? And you're going to hear more about those things later, but he's going to come out here and tell you all one little thing, but it was plenty of things, and all of them God did. But I'll tell you all later, don't say I said anything. Somebody say hallelujah. Don't say I said anything. Somebody shout praise the Lord. Amen. Okay. He might beat me up after service, eh? but I have enough bodyguards around, so I'm sure I'll be protected. Wow, God is good. Amen. I'm just excited. God has been blessing him, and God does the same for all of us if we're faithful. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Bishop is in Tobago. After yesterday evening, he had to fly to Tobago Church because Apostle Akindele and his wife are in Grenada today, so Bishop had to be in Tobago today, and you had to be here today. Somebody say amen. All right. So... Our, our prayer, we keep praying for him and trusting God. Things will go well and he'll be back this evening. He has another service in another church this evening. So you see how it goes? But God is a good God. Say amen. amen. Hallelujah. We had a wonderful, wonderful. Before this one though, Ascension. I just want to see all the members of Ascension. Could you all rise up? And Brother Colin, where is he? Could you all rise up? All participants in Ascension, all members, could you all rise up? Could you all come closer to the front here? I'm only seeing one or two or three. I don't know if they were so tired and they couldn't wake up this morning. Okay, I saw some people go downstairs also. But come, come forward. Come. I want us to put our hands together for these people, these representatives. They did us proud. Amen? 
They did a great, great, great job. The talents are great. The organization is great. Everything is great. I really thank God for you all. And led by this young man, God bless you all. I want us to just pray for them. I want to just pray for them and just declare God's glory, God's grace, God's strength, God's wisdom, God's everything to continue to increase upon their life. Amen. We just thank God for what God is doing in their lives. And we see greater, greater, greater things will happen through them in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to call you, Brother Fields. Come and just bless them. Hallelujah. You're sitting in front. You think it's for nothing? Hallelujah. God be praised. Heavenly Father, we give you praise. Father, we thank you, O oh God, for young people today, Father. We thank you for ascension, O oh God. Father, we bless them in the name of Jesus. Father, we declare, O oh God, that as they rise, Father, in his service to you, Lord, that no weapon that is formed against them shall prosper. Father, we declare that they shall remain in their kingdom. They shall remain in the house of God, and they will serve you faithfully, Father. They will not be drawn away, Father, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we place a hedge around them in the name of Jesus, and we declare, O oh God, that everything that they put their hands to do is prosperous, and it is blessed in the name of Jesus. Father, we speak excellence in their life. We speak good success, O oh God, and we declare, Father, that they will rise to the top of their field in the name of Jesus. Father, bless them now, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Just hold a minute here. Turn around, turn around. There are lots of other people now. I, I'm not even sure we've all understood what Ascension really means. It's our special arts ministry. Could I see, could you rise up all those who participate in any special arts in this church? You dance, you sing, you do poem, you, what else you do? You do monologue, you do drama, you do all of those. Could you rise up? You're one of those people that do any of these things in the church. Okay, praise the Lord. Okay, so these are all the members of Ascension and many of you who are still sitting down, who have your poem and your song inside and you won't come and sing and dance it yet. Let's put our hands together for everybody. These are all part of our Ascension, our special arts department. Those who minister to us in different ways. We appreciate you all. Thank God for you all. Thank God for your talent. And I want to just encourage you all to work with Brother Colin. He's a young man, but he's just to help to coordinate and make sure that we function and that we put things in place that we all can participate in being a blessing in the house. Amen. Amen. Thank you, guys. God bless you. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Okay, Pastor Ralph is in Bang Village today. He's helping out over the ministry in Bang Village. So he's doing well. Amen. Praise the Lord. And we saw Karen Bang Village. Uh, Karen, Karen Woodruff. We saw him yesterday at our meeting. I called him. I asked him if he came as a spy. Yesterday we had a wonderful meeting. How many of us were here yesterday? All right. Thank you all for coming out yesterday. We had a leaders meeting, believers meeting. We did lots of things, spoke about lots of new things, lots of new procedures, some of which you're going to see some information on the notice board relating to your department and your departmental reporting and how your department is going to be assessed and how we're going to determine who is the department for the year. You're going to get, you know, all those who were here yesterday got it. But we're going to kind of put the order of your assessment on the notice board during this week. I want to give you some of the things we spoke about that we need to know also. We are doing some things differently where... You all know we're on Win TV. How many of you saw our TV production so far? How many of you like it? Come on, let's put our hands together for ourselves. We're doing well. Amen? <laughs> Amen. We are doing well. Doing well. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Yes, yesterday during our meeting, we also had to took a shoot of our seniors. We did a little segment with the seniors. We just thank God for what God is doing. So there's a crew working on that, you know, making sure things are okay. There's a production team. There's a management team. And it's just going well. It's a lot of work. A lot, a lot of work. But God is good. Amen? Okay, and in the light of that work, we're also doing something a little differently in the technical department because Pastor Dale and Deacon Kevin and a lot of people in the technical department are very integral in the whole putting together of the Win TV package that we have, our whole production. So we decided also to begin a change, to restructure, to put things in place in the technical department, have a new leadership structure for you know, some other people to get involved in there so that we do not have the same people tied up in too many things and find it hard to do all that has to be done in church. Somebody say amen. amen. You know, because it's many of us. So why must we have the same people oversee win, oversee this, oversee everything else, and it becomes a strain on them. It's the month of rejuvenation, so to allow them to be feeling a sense of rejuvenating, we're changing things around to rejuvenate the technical department. Is that making any sense? I'm not sure, but anyway... <laughs> So we've changed things around a little bit. For now, we're having a team, a committee that will be working in that department. The committee are going to kind of work together with a new ministerial overseer. I'm going to call the committee members first. I hope I remember. Well, yes, I will. I'm watching one of them right there. Sister Jennifer, call him up. Could you stand up? Stand up, stand up. Amen. Praise the Lord. Brother, Brother Daniel, at the, at the camera, Brother Daniel, could you? 
Right, Brother Daniel, right. Brother Omari, could I see Brother Omari Solomon? Come on, they can't see you there. Only me could see you there. They can't see you there. Brother Omari Solomon, right. Praise the Lord. Give us a wave. Stand right there so they'll see you well now. See, all those here didn't even see you. You know, you're tall, but you're at the back. you got to come stand right here. Okay, you all saw the handsome face, right, Brother Omari? There's another, who is another brother or sister? You all remind me now. Brother Philip de Sous. Where is Philip? Okay, Philip is not here this morning, amen? So these are going to be the committee members working in there. Okay, Pastor Dill and Elder and Deacon McClatchy are consultants and their advisory personnel. We also have a, another new brother, a brother Nigel. He's also an advisor. Is he in church today by any chance? We'll meet him some other time. He's also an advisory person, a consultant in the department to help us. But we have a new ministerial overseer over the department. She doesn't know much technical stuff, but she's a good leader, good administrator, good overseer, good team builder, everything. We have Minister Michelle Perryman as ministerial overseer of technical department. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. So we're just going to believe God that they are going to work together as a team and they're going to develop all that they need to do to make sure that the department keeps working well. And all our senior people, our consultants are always there to give them help because they might not all be as technically thing as everybody else is, but they're going to be able to put things together, and we believe things are going to work because we are going to support them. Somebody say amen. amen. Hallelujah. Okay. Another thing we informed yesterday, the people yesterday, was that we have some additions to the, to the governing council of the church. Okay, and you've all got to know by now that the, the teams are going to be, departments are going to be doing their reports at the governing council meeting. We're going to have you come in, and you're going to do your report and the appraisal and everything else. But we've added two members to the governing council. And we added Sister Zandra Gajada. Where is Sister Zandra? <laughs> All right. She's the church treasurer. She's going to be functioning as treasurer. So we're glad to have her come on the team. And we also added Dickin Mervyn, I feel. <laughs> All right. Praise the Lord. Amen. Okay. So we added them to kind of replace Pastor Woodruff. And, and one of our elders also left recently. Elder. Sorry? Elder and Mary Spence. Right. So we kind of added those people to replace. So things are. Things are doing good. Somebody say praise the Lord. I didn't see you yesterday, Pastor Anne. I know they had you working. I know you told me that. Yes, God is good. But you must tell them not to have you working when we have important meetings. All right. God is a good God. Amen. Okay, this afternoon, morning actually, we have the academic camp. They're graduating. They're doing their closing program this second service. So I want to encourage you as many as can to be here to support from 1030 to 1230. Watch our children, encourage them, laugh with them, bless them, you know. They're downstairs. Many of them are downstairs now putting everything together. So they are going to be here in second service, and we're going to see all that they have done. They'll get awards, and they'll do special stuff, and we are going to be all blessed. Amen? Amen? All right. One last thing that Pastor Caesar told me to tell you all, and I think he might have forgotten. On Wednesday, somebody say Wednesday. It's a very special day. Wednesday is the 8th. On that day, the Sports and Family Day Committee will be doing, you'll be giving us very important information. So all team leaders and team members and everybody should be here on Wednesday because we are going to get some important information that relates to our sports day this Wednesday. So let's all be here. Amen? Amen. All right. How, who knows when the sports day is? Our second car rally, cookout, and who knows? 19. 19. And that day is only, only one service, only one event and everything. And it's going to be holding at, who knows? President's Ground. Those of you who did not come yesterday do not know. President's Ground, I believe that's in St. Anne's, is it? Okay, somebody clap for me. I know that. Ooh, yeah. I'm so good. Wow. St. Anne's, President Ground. I live right next to it, but I'm almost not sure which one it is. But I'm really getting better and better. Somebody say hallelujah. All right, so it's, it's, it's happening on the 19th, so let's get ready. Tell all your friends, do not show up in church here. You will be disappointed, all right? So we need to know all of that. Okay, this paper apparently is fulfilled. Amen? <laughs> okay, so this morning is our month of rejuvenation. I'm going to share a word to encourage us and all of that, to bless our hearts, to bless myself, to bless you, to bless me, to bless everybody. Say amen. amen. How many of us want to be blessed? You're here because you believe in God to be blessed. Amen? amen. Okay, that's why, we come. that's why I'm here too, because I believe in God to be blessed. I wouldn't come here if I thought there was nothing in it for me. I wouldn't come here just to give you a word or to talk to you about something because I know something. I'm here because I want to be blessed and I know God is going to bless me. Just by being here, there's a blessing in here for me. Say amen. Yeah. Just seeing your face is a blessing for me. Somebody say amen. Yeah. 
So I feel so happy to come every Sunday just to watch all of you all and smile. I think it's a very good thing. Say amen to that. Amen. amen. So don't miss church. Now, the title of my message, I chose to call it Treasure Your Treasure. Treasure Your Treasure. I had to ask Kudodo, does that sound okay? Yes, man. He said, yes, it sounds good. Treasure Your Treasure. Right. You've got to treasure your treasure. If you don't treasure it, who's going to treasure it for you? Nobody. So you have got to treasure your treasure. Now, do something for me. Something funny. Write on the board for me, um, sister, sister, somebody in there. McClatchy? Is she there? Write on the board for me, there's a treasure in your vessel. There's a treasure in our earthen vessels. Write something like that. Write it out on the screen for me. There's a treasure in our earthen vessels. I'm talking this morning about treasure your treasure. Because many of us sometimes feel guilty. Many of us feel, feel guilty about, about, about being treasured, about being rejuvenated. We just feel it's not worth it. We don't think we're good enough. We do not think we want to relax and enjoy. We just think somehow we're too sinful. You know, somehow we think we don't deserve it and all of that. Is it taking so long to write that? There's a treasure in your earthen vessel. There's a little joke that I want to do. Oh, praise the Lord. Right. Now you're talking. No, I wanted you to write it like this. Just write it like this. Now write all of this together like one word. Yeah, write this uh, together like one word. Remove the eye in it and write it like one word. But remove the eye. Just put it together, but remove the eye. Just write that as, uh, as like one word. Quickly. Remove the, the apostrophe and all that, like one word. Write it together. No spaces at all. Remove that, whatever you call that. What you call that? Apostrophe. apostrophe. Thank you, people. You know how long I was in primary school? Remove the apostrophe. Remove the spaces. <laughs> remove the spaces and everything. And just write it as one word. Praise the Lord. One word. Put the A there. Put the A there. You all have to listen, you know. You all have to listen. Remove the space after the S, people. Oh, praise the Lord. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Minister Michelle, get them, you know. Technical um, overseer, you understand? Get them. All right. They ain't taking me on at all. Remove the space after. Okay. What are you seeing, people? Okay. I, I, want, I wanted you to put a space after treasure and everything. I wanted the space removed. Put a space after treasure. Right. You know? I was hustling and, and doing all this message in the night, so I kind of wrote up everything. And this morning, going over it, I'm like, Teresa? You know, and that's what I saw, Teresa. Just wanted you all to see the Teresa. Somebody say amen. I wrote it up in the night, and I guess the, the way I wrote it, it was all together. This morning, I'm like, what is Teresa? You know? <laughs> I'm like, what's Teresa doing in my note? But there they came out as what? Teresa treasure in our earth verses. Anybody call Teresa this morning? That's your name? I believe God has something special for you. Amen? All the, all the Teresas are treasurable people. Any other Teresa this morning? Everybody now claiming Teresa. Look them. Look them. They're all claiming Teresa. <laughs> oh, Lord. God has something good for Teresas this morning. Amen? I just saw them like, Teresa treasure. What, who is Teresa? It took me a little while to know that that was my Teresa, but I just saw Teresa. And I said, this morning, God has a blessing for the Teresas. Amen? See how messages come about, and I could preach a big, preach up a storm on Teresa this morning. Say hallelujah. All right, so God is a good God. So there's a treasure in your vessel. And if your Teresa is special, extra special treasure, amen? All right, look, I moved the Teresa. It was a little joke. <laughs> oh, God is good. Yeah, so some of us really feel guilty. Some of us don't feel we're worth it. Some of us don't want to really relax. Some of us think it's too sinful for us to have a good time. After all, there's so much important stuff to do. And we just struggle. We struggle. We struggle with really enjoying ourselves. We struggle with, with having a good time. We struggle with having some fun just for fun. Anything wrong with having some fun just for fun? We struggle. And I'm getting delivered from that. And I believe we all need to get delivered from that. Somebody say Hallelujah. We just struggle sometimes. Some of us are not broke, you know. How many of us are not broke? Say, I'm not broke. Come on. Say, I am not broke. All right. Many of us are not broke. All of us are not broke in the name of Jesus. Somebody say, Amen. Stop believing in being broke, man. It doesn't work. It doesn't help. So make up your mind you're not broke. Say, Amen. amen. All right. But sometimes we can do some stuff. We can do some stuff, but we just don't do it because, well, there are more important stuff to do. We can spend a little money. Sometimes we don't bother because what? There are more important stuff to do. We're always studying all the more important stuff, and you don't use the money and all of that. You, you, you know, many of us are looking, of course, for somebody to give us something free. Somebody say free. 
We don't. We like that, ain't? Okay, but three things do come, but sometimes you've got to do something for yourself with your own money. Somebody say amen. Yeah. You've got to do something for you with your own money. You know, we're accustomed to it. Well, as children growing up, you're in your parents' house, you got everything, how? Free. And you become an adult, for some reason, you're always waiting for somebody to give you something. With your own money, you cannot do something. You can't buy something. You can't spend on yourself. You can't do stuff. You're looking for someone or the other to get it out of somebody else, to use somebody else's thing, some special thing, some favor, some blessing. Blessings are good. Favors are good. But do you know you can bless yourself? Do you know that you can favor yourself? You can do good things for yourself, man. You all know we went on a cruise, right? So those of you that came on Wednesday would have known. We went on this cruise last week, had a good time. And on our table, on you know, they have dinner tables and all of that. If you want to go to the dinner table, you could go, you could dress up, all kind of thing. We had our table and we met these two ladies. They looked maybe in their 50s, you know. And they were Trinidadians, you know, Tobe. So we're happy to meet Tobe now. I didn't, we didn't even know them. We just greeted them casually. After the dinner, they came and said, Bishop I mean, nice to have sat and dined with you. We're down royalty. I'm like, who? Who are they? And they said they were there when my husband ministered in Tobago the week before, in their church or wherever. You know how it's a small world, but, so thank God, but, okay, so that was that. And I was like, oh, they're on the cruise, and we're talking, and the woman said, one of them said, my mother, 85-year-old woman, my mother gave me a gift to go on this cruise. I'm like, wow, your mother, do you know how much to put out to go on a cruise? Her mother gave her the gift to go on the cruise, and I'm like, this is really wonderful, a mother, 85-year-old woman. Her mother is alert and stuff, and knows what things are about, knows about cruises. But in talking and talking, you know what I found out now? They're actually business people. They've gone on several other cruises. If you see them, if you see them, they look simpler than me. You understand that? And if you, how simple could you get? Well, I mean, very simple looking people. Why are you laughing? <laughs> very simple looking people. Very, you would not assume that they had a cent in any account. Somebody say amen. You know, very simple looking, very cool, whatever, all of that. So relaxed and everything. They said they've gone on cruises, they've gone to vacation, they've gone around the world, they've gone here, gone there. They're into business, so they're very stressed in business. But they've also learned to every year take some time to vacate and do stuff. She said, this is our 30th year traveling together. She and her sister, you know, travel 30th year. And this is their second cruise for the year. I couldn't believe it. You would have thought they looked like they never went into a plane in their life. You understand? That, no, that was the way. That was the way. You take things before they have learned what it meant to relax. And their mother gave them that gift. And you know what occurred to me? Because they've learned to do this for themselves, they're accustomed doing it. When their mother was ready to bless them, she wasn't going to bless them with a little $20 to go and buy KFC. She gave them a good gift. Somebody say amen. Because she knows they deserve it. She knows they know how to do stuff. If you begin to do good stuff for yourself, the blessings and favors that will come your way will be good stuff. If you only go to KFC and I want to give you a gift, I'll think, well, KFC voucher now. No, because I think that's what you're worth or what you deserve or what you like. That's what you're accustomed. If I give you to go to some restaurant, you might pass out. You know, this is what you're accustomed. That's what you like. So I'll just give you that. No, this is how things think, you know. If you want to give something to some people, you think who they are, what you think they want, what you think they like or deserve or whatever. Unconsciously, what you think they are worth, which is wrong. It's not what they are worth, but we just kind of weigh them and everything and determine what you're doing for them. What I'm saying, treat yourself good, carry yourself with some dignity, and some good blessing is going to come your way. Somebody say amen. Amen. We've got to learn that we're worthy of a lot. Don't let anybody look down on you like if you're a nobody. Don't let anybody think of you like if you don't want nothing, you're just a footmat and you're just this and you're just that. No, no, no. I didn't say to be proud. But I'm saying you deserve something. Would be happy to do something to make yourself happy. Okay, don't just do it because you're in so under somebody, somebody parent doing it, uncle doing it, auntie send it. Don't wait for auntie, brother, uncle. The little money you earn is little, but now and again, do something good for yourself. Somebody say amen. Anything wrong with you splurging a little? I didn't say every day go and take a couple of massages, but now and again, a massage will do you good. Somebody say amen. You've got to be delivered from the thing about, oh gosh, so many important things to do. You are important. Tell somebody I'm important. Come on, you're important. Do something good for yourself. Don't wait for people. Do some that money you earn. You work so hard. You're working so hard, people, all stressed out, getting no time to rest. The little time you can take to rest, take it and do something. Just relax and enjoy it. Get over, you know, being hung up and strung up and just relax. We all have to learn to relax. Say amen. amen. People, I went on that cruise, eh? But up to now, you know, I didn't dip in the water, I didn't dip in no pool. You know, so I'm getting delivered also gradually. Somebody say amen. 
I didn't dip in nothing. We went before my husband, which I did go in pool also. But I walked with all kind of two bad suits, you know, but up to now I ain't wear none yet. Because really I'm generally self-conscious anyway, so that's another issue. My children are there to wear some bad suit. You know, anyway, don't go there. <laughs> Even though my bad suits are fairly decent, but still I never really went in any. But the point is my children were there and I was more studying them. My job there was to monitor and oversee everybody. So my duty was to make sure where they are, People, it was just stress. <laughs> All it did was stress. <laughs> I was monitoring where they were, you know, what they're doing. I'm calling the children's camp. I did there, tell them to come out and meet us in the cabin to meet me here because we were going on again into the city or wherever, into the different places now. Believe it or not, one of my colleagues in school gave me thing, told me to shop for her. So I was more concerned shopping for this lady than anything else. So we were reaching St. Thomas, you know, I had to go and look for this for this lady. Nothing for me, you know, but they were studying this lady, you know. And when I came back or went out, and the children were out there, I called for them. What happened? One day we couldn't find the sandals. I went behind whatever, I quarreled with them, you know, and all of this kind of thing. Basically, relaxing sometimes just doesn't come naturally. You've got to take it. It will not happen to you. You have got to do what? Take it. Up to now, if you see the beautiful pools and whirlpool and jacuzzi things everywhere, and up to now, I didn't dip in one. Not one. Every day, my chair on slide in jacuzzi. My husband did one one day, thank God. He also did a table tennis one day and came back with all, all soft, but thank God. <laughs> Why well, didn't go? I didn't do nothing. I was there, sit down, watch, make sure, supervise, call up and whatever. I tried to get some walkie-talkie thing they had, which you could monitor, but I ended up not getting it to give all of them to monitor where they are and all this kind of thing. I didn't get it. Every day I'm do make sure your children who do actually, maybe I don't know if I stress the child, but you know they had events for children for Akacha and them's age, nine to eleven. They had one for Udo's age. Udo was to go there, but Udo hardly went, you know, because when we went out, I told him to make sure he supervises his brother. So he was only going behind his boys and he didn't go, he told me he didn't really like all the treasure hunt. It was childish. They had a 12 to 14. He's 14. He said he, he wanted to go for the 15 to whatever. I said, no, you are only what? 14. So, you know, he said it was boring. The American children and them are looking small and he looks taller than them. And it is boring and he's not going. But he was just going behind the boys. And actually, he spent a lot of time going to the band. Eh? He actually went and played the piano. He on sat one of the piano people and played their piano. He played in the band, one Caribbean band. He played the drums. Well, every day, we actually took piano pictures because he played piano in some lounge, in some band and all of that. He went, every day he went there. Instead of going to anything, he went and played piano and supervised his brothers because mommy says you had to supervise and watch over your brothers. You know, I signed for the children. You know, you could sign, uh, you could allow them to sign themselves in and out so they could go in and out, but I didn't let it go that easy. We had to monitor their every movement. Because I haven't learned what it is to really what? Relax. Relax. I'm telling you this, tell you that we all need deliverance from lots of idiosyncrasies. Somebody say amen. amen. You know, the more I preach it here, it will be getting into my spirit. You all get the point? I preach it more. The more I say it to myself, it will be helping me to get over. And you also will get over your own problem. Say amen. amen. This is our month of what? Rejuvenation. You've got to find a way to have a good time. Find a way to relax. Your life and work and family and children are sometimes stressful. So why not find a time to do something to distress? You deserve to distress. God put something good in you. You've got to make it happen. Nobody's going to make it happen for you. You have got to make it what? Happen. Listen, like you all know, last year we renovated our house and stuff. And then I thought about we had to decorate over stuff. But somehow or the other, in my mind, it's no big deal where you stay home. Look, it don't matter. Once you can fall in your bed and sleep, you're happy. Once you have a bed, you're good to go. Somebody say amen. That was my feeling, you know, but I just thought in my spirit, you know, do it nicer, change colors, do stuff. Of course, I didn't know what to do. Not a clue how to decorate anything. That's why we have beautification and everybody. Because for me, if it was for me, you would have not a flower anywhere. You understand me? You just have the chairs in there, any old house, not a carpet. I'm just not good with them kind of stuff, really, you know. But, you know, but like I told you, I am changing every day. Somebody say amen. amen. Tell somebody I'm getting better. Amen. Tell somebody she is getting better. Oh, I am getting better. Amen. amen. All right. So, well, so we said we we're going to do this change over the thing or whatever. I had to call Sister Julie. Is she in the house today? Well, I called Sister Julie to come and help me and all of that. And we decided everything to do and what, what, what to do and stuff like that. And I just, in my mind, do go show this money to spend. Just why we have to change that? What is wrong with that? Why we have to move that? Why we must change that? I just haven't learned. I have, not because we are quite broke. Not that. But somehow, <laughs> but somehow I just kind of, what's the point? All this money, if I tell you how much money we spend fixing, changing, you will not believe it. 
I don't want to tell you. You won't believe it, but to me, it's just too much. And in my mind, you don't want to spend those money if it is not very, very important. If it is not your food, you mustn't spend on it. That was my kind of mindset. But you got to change that mindset. Somebody say amen. amen. Just do some stuff just to have some good-looking thing around. It is the good thing to have good things to see. Somebody say amen. amen. Better to look at good things and look at your old thing forever and ever. The same old thing for since, 1, 000, since 1810. You got to look at something good. Somebody say amen. amen. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Do something good for yourself. Spend some money. Spend some time. Make an effort. You grew up in your mother's house where your mother did it, your father, your parents. Now you're an adult. Somehow you're like, we just had to get into the place of knowing it's my time to take care. Do something good for me. Take your time to do it. It takes time and effort. More time than you have, but you got to find some time to do something good for you. Find some time to relax your mind. Find some time to beautify your atmosphere, beautify yourself. Do something worthwhile. It is worthwhile. You are deserving of something beautiful. Somebody say amen. amen. You all are wondering, is there any scripture this morning? Yes, there is. Yes, there is. Second Corinthians 4. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. I brought a book I was reading that I saw. A, a nice version of Second Corinthians, what I want to share here. And I wrote it in beside my note there, page 56. If you have my book, turn there. I'm going to read the version from this um, book. The, um, 2 Corinthians 4, from verse 7 to 11. From verse 7 to 11. You can project it in the version you have, and I'm going to read the one I want to read. Okay, it says, but this treasure, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, from verse 7 to 11. You can start from verse 6, actually. I want to back up. Start from verse 6 for me, please. Okay, for God who said, let light shine out of darkness. Listen to me, there was darkness. But God chose to say what? Let light shine. Darkness is not so bad, but guess what? Light looks better. Somebody say amen. Light is more bright. It's more exciting. Light is just, you know, you all feel better in the light than in the dark. Therefore, God said, let light shine out of dark. I don't know what is dark in your life, but it's time to let some light shine. Somebody say amen. He said, let light shine out of darkness. He made his light to shine in our hearts, to give us the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Christ. The light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Christ. But we have this treasure in jars of clay that this all-surpassing power is from God and not from us. My version said, but this precious treasure, this light and power that now shine within us. What is that treasure? It is the light of the knowledge of the glory of God is the treasure. That's the treasure. God put the light in there. He caused the light to shine in your heart. The light, that power, that knowledge of God's glory is a treasure that God has put inside of you. Somebody say amen. amen. But it says we have that treasure, that, this precious treasure, this light and power that now shine within us. It is held in a perishable container that is our Weak bodies. Somebody say weak bodies. All right. The perishable container or weak bodies or mortal bodies. Everyone can see the glorious power. Everyone can see that the glorious power within must be from God. And it is not our own. There's a great power inside of you. We all know it's not of us. Because our natural body is what is weak. It's perishable. It's mortal. So the power of God, the glory of God, the light of God, the strength of God that we have, we all can see it is not of ourselves. Because in our bodies, we can do very little. Or actually, we can do nothing. Somebody say amen. Bible said in ourselves, we can do what? nothing so that power it's not from us okay it comes from god we know that we are pressed on every side by troubles can anybody identify with that we are pressed on every side by troubles but we are not crushed and broken can somebody say amen, amen. we are perplexed because we don't know why things happen as they do but we don't give up and quit can somebody say hallelujah Anybody ever felt perplexed? You don't know why, what is happening, how it is happening. You're not sure what's going on. Everything happening differently from what you planned. You feel perplexed, but you do not give up and you're never going to quit. Say amen to that. We are hunted down, but God never abandons us. Brother Jabez was hunted down on the job. They were stressing him out. But God was always there. When he was going to leave, they wanted him back. Somebody say hallelujah. 
And the same thing is happening to you today. Could you on your job anywhere? They're disturbing you. They're harassing you. They're stressing you. You feel they want to kill you, but they actually love you. They don't know how to express it. Sometimes they are jealous, people. Sometimes they are jealous of all the good things. Sometimes, but they don't know what they're doing. But when you dare live, then they begin to feel the difference. Somebody say hallelujah. So we're hunting down, but God would never abandon us. We get knocked down, but we get up again and keep going. Say amen to that. These bodies of ours are constantly facing death, just as Jesus did. So it is clear to all that it is only the living Christ within us who keeps us safe. Yes, we live under constant danger to our lives because we serve the Lord. But this gives us constant opportunities to show forth the power of Jesus Christ within our dying bodies. We live under that danger all the time because we serve God. We have opportunities, however, to show forth God's power. Everything that is happening to us allows us to show forth what? God's power. Every stress we are going under allows us to show forth what? God's glory. But let me tell you something. Like we heard on Wednesday when Pastor Gerald was sharing. We can't show God's power, God's glory when we feel just all the time we feel depressed. You can't allow those things happening to you to make you always feel depressed. You can't let it happen. You've got to begin to change how you feel, people. You've got to begin to stop feeling down and out. Stop feeling I'm all knocked. The Bible says you're knocked down, but you're not going to be crushed. The Bible said you're, uh, you, you, you're, you're, you know, def or whatever, frustrated or whatever. They're, they're kicking you around, but you're not going to be knocked down. You're not going to give up. You're not going to quit. you got to make up your mind not to allow your feelings to rule your life. Somebody say amen. You've got to make up your mind on that. The devil is going to try. Your co-workers are going to try. Your neighbors are going to try. Your children will try. Even your wife will try. Sometimes your mother-in-law will try. Father-in-laws and all will try. Men say amen. Because they always blame me mother-in-laws. And mother-in-laws are good people. Mother-in-laws say amen. Because I'm going to be one on one day. Somebody say amen. Mother-in-laws are good people. Mother-in-laws say amen. amen. Pastor C, haven't you realized that? Amen. Thank you. Don't worry with those who say bad about mother-in-law. You must never join them in saying that. Because they are good people I want to be. Somebody say amen if the Lord tarries. Hallelujah. But I'm saying the devil will try. Could use anybody to try to harass you. But they're going to refuse to be harassed. Say amen. amen. Refuse to be harassed. Life is not always going to give you a pie and give you good things. But you've got to take what you want. You've got to take it. You've got to press in. You've got to take it. You've got to press. You've got to press. You've got to press for what you want. Press for the good things, the better things in life because you deserve it. Somebody say amen. I said there's a treasure in there. The knowledge of the glory of God. That treasure is in there. The light of the glory of God. That treasure is in there. But where is that treasure hidden, people? In your frail body. It's hidden in your frail body. That's where the treasure, treasure is in there. It's inside. The power is there, but it's hidden. It's covered by this. If you don't take care of this, that power is never going to come forth. Somebody say amen. Or how you carry yourself, what you do with yourself, how you rejuvenate your mind and your body would help. Thank God you come to church to rejuvenate your spirit. You get spiritual food. When you leave church, you feel you can take on the world. You feel you can pray and you can do this and that, which is wonderful. But you also need to liberate your mind and you also need to liberate your body. Somebody say hallelujah. Listen to me. You, once you, you've got to make sure you're not in sin. You've got to know what the Bible says is sin and what is wrong. What is wrong is wrong. But we in the church have created so many sins that don't exist. Nowhere in the Bible. They don't exist anywhere. But with everything is a sin. Everything is a demon somewhere. Somebody say amen. Everything. We've got to make up our mind that we stop creating sins that don't exist. Because we're limiting ourselves from making the best of all that God has given to us. Somebody say amen. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. God put good stuff. God put great talents. God put things in the world. Talents are in there. People of God have great talents. Ascension had a thing on Friday. Some people did not bother to show up because, well, you know, they have other things to do. we got to make up our minds to take some time to relax, enjoy, to laugh. Laugh at ourselves. Laugh at the performers. Laugh at everything. Just have some good laugh. Somebody say amen. Find something to laugh about. Somebody say amen. You know, you've got to do this as a family, find things to do. Because what I'm showing you from the scripture is that there are enough pressures around you. You saw that? Enough, enough things trying to crush you. Enough things trying to suppress you. Enough things trying to knock you over. But I want you to make up your mind, I am not going to be knocked over by anybody. Somebody say hallelujah. 
Amen. God is a good God. Amen. So we've got to make up our mind that we've got to put in the effort, invest the time, invest the effort, and all of that. The treasure is the power, is the light, is the glory that is inside us. God put it in there, what is covered in this body. So I've got to do something about this body so that this body doesn't fall apart. If the body is, is not okay, that cannot show for God's treasure. If the body is sick and weak and frustrated and, and depressed and down and out and looking run over by a truck, I cannot do what God wants me to do. Somebody say amen. Somebody shout hallelujah. Alright. The vessel contains the treasure. So tell somebody the vessel is valuable. Tell somebody that. Oh, tell somebody my vessel is valuable. Tell the next person your vessel is valuable. I don't care the vessel fat. I don't care if it's thin. I don't care if it's round, if it's short and dark. That vessel is what? Valuable. And if there's something about that vessel you don't feel too good about, you can make some adjustments. Somebody say amen. You could hit the gym. Ladies, shout hallelujah. hallelujah. I didn't go to the gym on the cruise. I didn't do nothing actually on that cruise, but God is good. Somebody say amen. But there was a gym there. Everything was there. In the previous cruise I did, but this time around I was just chaperone and, and police and everything all the time. My mind was just on the children to make sure that everything was okay. Let me tell you some of my little fears that came up on me. I'll keep going back to this story. The, you know, you read all of the brochures and they said, you swim at your own risk. You use the slide at your own risk. We have no lifeguards on the ship. I said, oh, Lord, trouble. And, you know, and I told you, the Udo said, mommy, why are you so frightened? The water can't even quite reach your hips. You know, that the water is quite shallow and all of that. But I'm still worried about how, you know, your own risk and everything here. Yeah. Udo said, mommy, you're always so scared. Look, the water not even high. What happened to you? Why are you worrying the boys that could swim? Everything okay. They said, don't dive. I see my boys diving. I go, stop diving. <laughs> All other people don't worry, you know, but I keep worrying. They say don't dive. You mustn't run. You're going to slide and fall, you know. <sighs> we got to learn to relax and let the children be children. Somebody say amen. amen. Oh, we could, we, we, we could drive ourselves crazy and get ourselves sick and get ourselves into our pleasure. We got to relax and enjoy our lives sometimes. Somebody say amen. amen. Tell your neighbor, do something fun just for fun. You don't have to find out what is the reason for it. Is it really important? Must I really do it? Are there Bible scriptures to tell you? We have to find three or four scriptures to confirm that we could have a little fun. You know, we've got to just relax. Some of us have issues sitting down to watch a little movie. Some of us have issues doing all kinds of things or taking a little walk. We need to change something. Let me tell you, my problem started since secondary school. I went to a boarding house. You all don't know what I'm talking about. But I went to a boarding house, and we had all kinds of things to do. You know, they had a routine. You had to wake up 5.30, do your morning work, do this, go to school, come back from school, go to dining room, come back from dining, go for rest to go and sleep, come back from there, go to prep. From there, you had an evening thing, which was either sports or community service where you had to clean some area or something. During the sports and thing, you could have that sports or laundry or community, different things every different group could do. And on the sports day, I used to be what? Hiding. I felt you don't have time for sports. What kind of thing is that? You know, I had all, if I tell you all my reasons, you guys would not believe it, you know. Like I tell you, all kinds of reasons. Sports, everything like that. Let me tell you, it included wearing your short pants. I don't want to wear short pants. I had all these issues all the time. Every reason not to do. Because to me, that wasn't important. There are better things to do. So if I could hide and go and do my laundry, I'll go and do it. If I could hide and go and put, catch up on some reading, I'll go and do it. Many of us have issues that came from long, long time ago. And then we find scriptures to back up our issues. We find scriptures. The Bible says bodily exercise is what? Profitable. It's a little profit, but it's good profit, my sister. We need the profit. Somebody say amen. Somebody shout hallelujah. We've got to make up our mind to stop creating things that are not in scripture. We've got to give ourselves reason to relax and take care of this valuable vessel. If not, the power of God cannot come forth out of it. Say praise the Lord. All right, just three points I have to... Um, talk about how, what you need to do relating to this whole vessel business. We've got to first, somebody say, think well of it. Say, think well of it. We've got to think well of it. Let's go to Proverbs 21 verse 5. Older members in this church, we know that scripture used to be one of the favorites. Proverbs 21 verse 5. We've got to think well. We've got to think well. Think well of your vessel. Think well of your treasure. Okay? Hallelujah. Good planning and hard work. Could we, could we, um, could we use... Um, what do you call it? Could we use the KJV? I just wanted the, the way you put it in there. 
Okay, could you go to King James Version? All right, the thoughts of the diligent tend only to what? Plenteousness. The thoughts, the thoughts, the thoughts of the diligent tend only to plenteousness. But everyone who is hasty only to want. Sometimes we're so hasty, so eager to run and go and do ABC. But you've got to think some good thoughts that are going to bring you plenty. Somebody say amen. you got to think of things that can bring you what? Plenty. Your thoughts tend only to plenteousness. Not the thoughts of the lazy. So I'm not telling you about being lazy. You've got to work. Do what you've got to do. Be diligent. Organize your life. Do the right stuff. But think smart and your thoughts are going to bring you some wealth. Going to bring you plenty. Say amen. That is why I say we don't want to be broke in this church. Say amen. We can't afford. We've got to think smart. Because the more we think smart, the more plenty we're going to get. Somebody say hallelujah. We're going to think like the lines are falling for you in one pleasant place. You've got to make up your mind on that one. That the lines are falling for me in good places. Pleasant places. How will it fall for you in there if all you ever go to is KFC? So the lines are going to be falling for you only in KFC. I have nothing against KFC, you know, people. I don't know what other fast food to find and say, but basically, you've got to ensure the lines fall for you in what? Pleasant places. Find some pleasant places to go. Somebody say amen. Okay, taking a walk could be a very pleasant experience. Somebody say amen. Watching the sunset and relaxing at some beach could be a very pleasant experience. Somebody say amen. Oh, the lines are falling for you, and we believe that means that your sister in Canada must send a barrel. That could be it, but it could mean that you are going to take your time, do something for you. Make sure that line falls in there for you. Somebody say amen. you got to make sure. Don't wait on me to give you the line or whatever. I might give you some kind of KFC line, but you got to make sure. Make sure you send yourself to some pleasant place now and again. Say hallelujah. You gotta decide what is pleasant for me. What is what can I do? Something different. Think differently. Think plenty. And I'll allow the lines to fall for you in those places. Somebody say amen. You gotta think that you are more than a conqueror. Romans 8 37. You gotta think like that. Think of it. I am more than a conqueror. You gotta think like Philippians 4 13. You gotta think I can do what? All things through Christ. I can stop being afraid of this and that, and I can do it. I can let go some of my unnecessary inhibitions, and I can what? Do it. Somebody say, praise the Lord. I can do all things through Christ. So remove some fears and phobias and undue apprehensions that we have, and make up your mind that you can do all things. Somebody say amen. Oh, gosh, that reminds me, people. They had some golf thing, and I was hoping to go and learn to do golf. I never went up to it today. Every morning they had a thing where you could go and learn golf. You know, just I wanted to do something different. And I'm giving you all this bad testimony. I didn't do the things I planned to do. Somebody say amen. Well, I'm changing. Trust me, I am changing. Somebody say I'm changing. I am changing. Somebody say amen. All right, hallelujah. But make up your mind about this thing. That greater is he that is in me. First John chapter 4, verse 4. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. You've got to think of that I've got a great God inside of me. I've got the power inside of me. I've got the treasure inside of me. I've got the light of the glory inside of me. I'm a glorious person. Make up your mind on that. So when you go for an interview, brother, you're going to say, I'm, 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 I'm the glory of God. So everybody's going to see me. They're going to fall in love with me. Somebody say amen. You've got to make up your mind. Think like that. Think of yourself great in that way. It's very important. Shout hallelujah, somebody. Okay, put this interesting scripture up on the board. Acts 26 and verse 2. You got to think yourself. Paul was under pressure. Okay, they accused him of all kinds of things. Accused him of this, that, and the other. And this King Agrippa had called him to come and answer for himself. And I just want to just read the first line. Paul said, "What? I think myself happy. Can you say that for you? Come on, say that now. I think myself what? Happy. Paul. He was in trouble. You know, he was there accusing him. He was in trouble. All of that. But he made up his mind. He said, I think myself what? Happy." Just that I can come before you to come and defend myself, I think myself what? Happy. Somebody say amen. How do you think yourself, people? Make up your mind to think yourself what? Happy. Think well. Rejuvenation. Think well of your treasure. Think well of your vessel. Think well of your mind. Think well of your career, of a better career, of a better salary, of a better family, of a better prayer life. Think well of all of these things that concern you so that you can maximize the potential that God put inside. Somebody say amen. 
Those that think well tend to do better things. Amen? Those that think of good things tend to bring those good things to pass. What you think about is going to dominate you and it's going to happen. Your heart and your thoughts make things to happen. Somebody say amen. Okay, how many of you can quote Philippians 4 verse 8? You can pull that up. Our thoughts. You've got to think of these things. Amen. Philippians 4. You've got to think of these things. You've got to think of these things. You've got to think of those things. Let's read it together. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, Think on these things. Hallelujah. I want to add there, maybe think only on these things. So there are some things you're always thinking about that you need to begin to delete from your thinking faculty. Say amen. You need to just delete those things. I need to begin to import some of these things into the things you think about. All the good stuff. Only good stuff. Only stuff. Don't tell me, well, it is true. It is true that I have no CXC passes. So I'm going to think on that. But things you think about must qualify in all the categories. Amen? It cannot be true and dishonest or true and, and, and not pure or true and not lovely. You need to think of things that are true. They must be lovely. They must be honest. They must be of good report. They must be virtuous. They must be able to make you the Praise God. Think of things that have all of the eight qualities right there. Somebody say amen. So if it is true and of bad report, don't keep your mind on those stuff. You don't need that. Okay? That some politician tips some money is a true thing. But is that a good report? No. So don't keep your mind thinking on it. And when you see the guy, you only stoop sin. And stressing out your life over somebody's foolishness. You don't want to go there. Somebody say amen. Keep your mind on some good stuff, man. Somebody say amen. Think of some nice stuff, some praiseworthy stuff, some virtual stuff. The more good you think, the more good you can do for you. The more you're upset and not thinking right, you can't bless you how much more bless me. You can't do that. You can't give your children, you can't bless your children, you can't bless your neighbor, you can't bless anybody because your mind is always on some frustrating situation. You always have something worrying you, something bothering you, something you're anxious about, some kind of thing you're so caught praying about or worrying about. You need to relax your mind and think on what? Great stuff. Somebody say amen. Think on how you can bless yourself and bless your neighbor and bless your sister and make somebody's life better. Hallelujah. All right, the first thing I said you have to do about your vessel, about your treasure, is you've got to think well of it. The next thing, guess what? Guess what? Guess what you got to? Speak well of it. Amen. Very easy. Think well of it and you got to what? Speak well of it. you got to speak all the above things I said before. Speak that you can do all things. Speak that greater is he who is in you. Speak that, you know, you're thinking right things. Speak all of these good things about it. Because guess what? Proverbs 18, verse 20, 21. We don't know what it says. Proverbs 18, verse 20 and 21. Let's go there. We ought to know all of that. We've got to remember that death and life are where in the power of the tongue. A man's belly shall be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth, and with the increase of his lips he shall be filled. Verse 21 says what? Death and life are in the power. You've got to know that. Your belly is satisfied by what you say. So come on, say things to satisfy you. If you say sour things, you're going to be looking sour all the time. Like you're bathing in lime juice. You don't want that. Somebody say amen. You don't want that. You know, you don't want to bathe in lime. You could probably bathe in passion fruit or something. You know? But you want to look good and happy all, all the time. Somebody say amen. You want to think yourself happy. You want to speak yourself happy. You want to do yourself happy. Somebody shout hallelujah. Yeah. I said shout hallelujah. hallelujah. All right, now you're talking. All right. Hallelujah. So you've got to be aware of that, that death and life, you're satisfied by what you say. And the Bible says in Proverbs 15 that a wholesome tongue is a tree of life. That's 15 and verse 4. A wholesome tongue is a tree of life. Let's go to Proverbs 15 and 23. I saw that when I was in South Carolina. I actually shared it in the church over there a little. But something just I saw was just exciting to me. Proverbs 15, 23. Remember that Pastor Steve was there? Yeah. I saw that on a day and I was just excited and shared it with them. A man hath joy by the answer of his mouth. And a word spoken in due season, how good is it? A man has joy by the what? Answer of his mouth. Guess what? You don't have joy by what somebody did to you. You don't have joy by 
the barrier that came from England. You don't have joy by your husband buying you a rose. You don't have joy by your child getting the school of his choice. You don't have joy by, you know, your bank account. You got a raise on your job. Well, a man has joy by the answer of his mouth. You are the architect of your own joy or sadness. Somebody say amen. amen. That's simple, you know. You are the architect of your own joy or sadness. Nobody should make you sad. You've got to decide if you're going to have joy. They tell you just lost your job. You say, oh gosh, I'm dead, I'm dead, I'm dead, I'm dead. The answer of your mouth, you're dead already. Somebody say amen. No. They tell you lost your job. You say, praise the Lord. God has got something good coming. You've got joy. Somebody say amen. They tell you your child did something wrong in school. You say, praise the Lord. God, you've got to do something. That's your son. Somebody say amen. Not, oh gosh, what go do? This stupid child go kill me. You got to say, Lord, this is your son. Well, I just give this to you. This is your time to prove yourself because you know, God, I ain't able, but you know, you could do it. I can't take on that. God, you just take, when I go there, just tell me what to do. You in control, yes? And you go on and enjoy your life as you go up to the school. Somebody say amen. Not you go up to the school frustrated, stressed out. When you reach there, the principal blew you up because you're looking stressed out already. Somebody say amen. You got to make, you got to answer to situations the way you want to answer. You got to answer based on how you want to feel. A man has joy. That just hit me like a ton of bricks. That was so good for me that I could answer the situations to determine my mood or I could answer to mess up my whole day. Somebody say amen. Oh, most of the time our days are messed up, Pastor. It's not your husband messed it up, you know. It's not, you know. It's not. It's you. We think somebody messed up my boss. They rare mess up my day, boy. As I reach in the office, no, no, no. You got to make up your mind that you're going to have joy by how you answer. They speak to you. You speak back in the proper way. You speak with some dignity, with some class. Speak with some joy. Speak based on the word of God. Speak based on the treasure, the power, the glory, the light that is inside your spirit. Not the circumstances that are pressing you. The Bible said you're pressed, but you're not distressed. The Bible said you're you're cast down, but you're not whatever, forgotten how it goes. Knocked out. The Bible said you're persecuted, but you're not abandoned. Thank you, Dion. You all know the word. Come on, put your hands together for yourselves, people. Hallelujah. So don't respond based on those problems. Respond based on the glory, the power, the light in your spirit so that you can have what? Joy. You can make up your mind to answer for joy and not for sadness. If you believe that, say amen. Open your mouth and say, I'm going to answer for joy. I'm going to answer for peace. I'm going to answer for love. Somebody shout hallelujah. You've got to make up your mind that you're going to have joy and nobody's going to steal your joy. Say amen to that. Not one person on earth has a right to steal your joy because if they cannot steal your joy, they can't touch your goods. Amen. Amen. If they can't steal your joy, they cannot touch your good. Say amen. Hallelujah. So that is that. And you all know Nehemiah 8 verse 10. We don't have to, we don't have to go read it. But it says that the joy of the Lord is your strength. The joy. So you need to answer for joy so that you can have some strength. Some strength. Strength to do what you want to do. Some strength to go where you want to go. Some strength to plan what exciting venture you want to plan. Some strength to be a blessing to the church. That brother Jabez. To, 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 some strength to say, I'm going to come and serve. I'm going to do this. Some strength to come out when your team has evangelism today like Kidima has. Some strength to attend a meeting when we call for prayer meeting. Some strength to do what your department says you ought to do. Somebody say amen. You need strength and joy. If you're frustrated, you can't come off evangelism to go and preach to who. When you are down and out, you got to make up your mind to answer for joy and then that joy is going to be your strength. Tell somebody you need strength, girl. Oh boy, tell them you need strength. You need strength. But you've got to be joyful to exercise your strength. You need strength to do that. Strength to plan your excitement. Strength to organize your house. Strength to do something for you. Strength to stop depending on some sister, some brother, some uncle, some father, somebody to do it for you. You've got to do something for yourself. If you get nothing out of this, make up your mind. I am going to go out of my way to do something for me. Something good for me. I'm going to trust God for once to do something good for me. Then keep praying for your father to send the money. Trust God to do something. Go into that your account and use that money. Do something for you. Somebody say amen. Somebody shout hallelujah. 
You need to, you need to make yourself feel good, feel happy, feel joyful, and be able to be a blessing. Think of who to bless. Start by blessing even you. Think of who to bless. And stop only thinking of who is going to bless me. When is she going to send me? She has never done this for me. You've got to do. Plan to do something good about yourself. Somebody say amen. All right, so get that strength so you can get up and go to the gym. Somebody say hallelujah. Somebody shall praise the Lord. All right, I said you've got to think well of that valuable treasure. Think well of that vessel. You've got to speak well of it. And the last thing I'm going to say is what? Guess what? You've got to do well to it. All right, we've been saying that. You've got to do well to it. Somebody say amen. You've got to do well to it. Somebody say amen. You've got to treat yourself well. Treat yourself right. If you treat yourself right, I would not want to treat you badly. I'd be too scared to treat you badly because she really treats herself good. So I'm going to watch out for how I treat you. Somebody say amen. Somebody shout hallelujah. Oh, now and again, the devil is going to set up someone to treat you bad. But it doesn't matter if you're treating yourself good enough. You won't even notice. When they're playing the fool, you just what? Ignore. Forget about them because you have so many good things going for you. So why are you taking on the brother or the sister or the uncle? You don't, you don't, it's just like water on a dog's back. You would not take it on. Amen? You've got to have good things going for you that when bad stuff comes, you don't even notice because you are full of goodness. Somebody say amen. Because you perceive that your merchandise is good. Somebody say amen. You got to make up your mind. I'm a good person. I deserve good stuff. I serve a good God. He blesses me with good things. The Bible says it gives me all good things to enjoy. First Timothy 6, and I think it's verse 17. He gives me what? All good things richly to enjoy. The Bible says the thief is going to come to what? To steal, to kill, and to destroy. But Jesus has come that I could have one life and life more abundantly. Abundantly, abundant life. What does it mean? You just think it's going to heaven, people. You just think it's about heaven alone. Abundant life starts right here, people. Somebody say amen. You got to have some abundant life right here. You got to do some abundant stuff for yourself right here. You got to make up your mind to depict the abundant God right here. Tell somebody I'm not going to be broke. Amen. Tell someone I'm not going to be dejected and frustrated. Oh, because I serve an abundant God who gives me all things richly to enjoy. Shout hallelujah. Oh, glory. My last scripture, Isaiah 40. A very spiritual scripture now, very important that we are all spiritual people. Somebody say amen. Okay, very spiritual scripture, very important. Isaiah 40, we should know it when I get there. You see from verse 28. Rejuvenation, hallelujah, rejuvenation. He says, have you not known, have you not heard the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, neither faints nor is weary. Why must you be weary and fainting every minute? The Bible says God neither faints nor is weary. Hallelujah. He says he, his understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the weak. If you are the weak, he gives you power. To those who have no might, he increases their strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary. When the youths are walking in their own power, they could faint and get weary. But he says the young men, they shall utterly fall, even though they feel they're young and strong. When they're on their own, they could fall down. But he says that those that wait on the Lord, but those that wait on the Lord, but those that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as what? Eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. That sounds to me like they're going to the gym. Somebody say amen. Mounting up with wings. If you see some things you got to do at the gym, all kind, all kind of crazy stuff. Running and not going. Doesn't that sound like the treadmill to you all? Walking and not fainting. The treadmill you're doing and you <laughs> But it says if you wait on the Lord, they're going to renew your strength. Somebody say amen. As in the physical, so in the spiritual. Wait on God to renew your spiritual strength and even your physical strength gets renewed. Amen. When you're at the gym, you'll do better. Somebody say amen. When you're on your job, you'll do better. Somebody say Amen. When you're on vacation, you'll enjoy it better. Somebody say amen. you got to learn to wait upon the Lord and renew your strength. He strengthens us. And that strength is your joy. Or that joy gives you strength. The joy that you have gives you strength. Allows you to have a good time. Allows you to do what you want to do. Do some stuff for fun. Because you learn to wait on the Lord. Renew yourself. Rejuvenate yourself spiritually. Rejuvenate yourself soulishly. Rejuvenate yourself physically, mentally. You need need all of that for yourself. Say praise the Lord. Okay, rise up on your feet now. Hallelujah. Rise up on your feet now. 
Okay, I'm going to read another last one. You all know about the three closings, right? So you got the first one, so here you go. I'm going to read this. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 and verse 12. It says, I know that nothing is better for than a man than to rejoice to do good in their lives and also that a man should eat and drink and enjoy the good of all his labor. It says, this is the gift of God. Tell somebody, this is the gift of God. Tell somebody, enjoying your life is the gift of God. Tell somebody else, enjoying your life is the gift of God. Amen. Lift up your hand and just give God some praise. Come on. Just give God some praise. Come on. Just give God some praise. Just give God some glory. Is anybody stressed out and feeling oppressed and feeling crushed and feeling pressed in and feeling abandoned and feeling cast down? Come forward. We're going to pray for you this morning. We're going to just pray. You're feeling stressed. You're feeling frustrated. You're feeling forsaken. You're feeling cast out. You're just feeling unable to enjoy. Come on. The Bible says it is the gift of God for you to enjoy your labor, for you to enjoy your work for you to enjoy your money for you to enjoy what you're working for for you to enjoy your family your children your husband your wife for you to enjoy your mother your mother-in-law your father-in-law bible said it is the gift of god ecclesiastes 9 says enjoy your life with the wife of your youth eat your food drink your wine i didn't say go and get drunk but the bible says eat and enjoy have some good time with your family the bible says this is your heritage it is the gift of God. So if you're feeling so stressed and you're not enjoying God's gifts, come out right now. Just lift your hand and just say, God, I want to enjoy. Just tell God, God, I want to enjoy my life. Lift up your hands, people. And just say, God, I want to enjoy my life. God, I want to have some fun. God, I want to be relaxed. God, I want to feel comfortable. God, I want to have a good time. I want to have fun just for fun. God, I want to change my mind. I want to rejuvenate my spirit, my soul, my body. Just tell God. Tell God that this morning. Just tell God that this morning. Make it simple. I want to have some fun. I want to enjoy my life. God, I want this burden off my shoulder. The weight shall be taken away. The burden shall be removed by reason of the anointing. The anointing destroys the yoke. The anointing removes the burden. Oh, I declare God's anointing over you this morning. I declare God's anointing over you this morning. I declare God's anointing over you this morning. I declare every yoke and burden removed this morning. Hallelujah. Open your eyes and look at me. Take it off your shoulder now. Come on, take it off. Just take it off. Take it off in the name of Jesus. Take it off in the name of Jesus. Take it off your shoulder. Come on, do that physically. Take it off in the name of Jesus. Take it off in the name and just say, that. thank you, Lord. Oh, receive God's grace, God's joy. God's joy right now in the name of Jesus. God's anointing, God's joy overshadow you right now in the name of Jesus. God's anointing, God's grace, God's joy in the name of Jesus. Receive God's anointing, God's joy, God's grace. God's anointing overshadow you. God's grace, God's peace, God's strength. Receive his anointing in the name of Jesus. Every stress is destroyed. Every stress is destroyed. God's anointing, God's grace, God's peace. Every stress is destroyed. God's anointing, God's peace, God's grace overshadow you. Relax in the glory of God. Relax in the joy of God. God's anointing, God's grace, God's peace. Release the stress right now. Relax in the name of Jesus. Receive God's anointing, God's grace, God's joy, God's peace. Be distressed right now. Remove the stress right now.